Hello there. In this episode, we'll be solving the tunneling problem. A quick recap. With discrete collision detection, it is possible that objects moving at high velocities that should collide instead end up passing through one another. That's what tunneling is. If you've been enjoying this series, consider triple smashing that like button. If you're one of the 83.2% of viewers that are not subscribed, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss future episodes. To solve the tunneling problem, we will use a combination of the Minkowski sum of the boxes that we're checking, along with a ray cast. Let's go through a simple example. Say we have one box moving towards a stationary box. In this example, we can imagine that the box is moving so fast that they may not visibly overlap. Alas, it is clear to us that these boxes will collide at some point. But how can we write an algorithm for this? Let's walk through a few ways you may consider when first coming across this problem. One way is we could just increase the physics tick rate so that you can detect an intersection as the boxes touch. That's going to get really computationally expensive very quickly once you add more than a few boxes. Okay, how about using ray casts? We could send out a ray in the direction the box is traveling and see if they hit anything. Starting with just one ray, we can see that we'll have a problem with this solution. Let's add a few more rays and see what happens. Bam, we've got a hit. Maybe this is the answer? Well, what happens if we shrink the white box down and make it a short boy? Well, this solution is starting to have some holes in it too. All right, now what if, and let's just move that white box over a bit to show the next part. What if we take the size of the box on the left and then we add it to the box on the right and we shoot a ray at that? That will reduce the size of the box on the left to zero, but we'll keep the size by adding it to the box we test against. Bam. Now all we need to do is know how to test an array against an AABB. The next part of this video will be more interactive and we'll be explaining exactly how to do that. I just want to put a quick note here for any of you wondering why we don't just expand the box to its swept size and then use a separating axis test. The reason is because with diagonal movements, we aren't dealing with axis line bounding boxes anymore. So we must consider arbitrary axes. All right, let's jump into the main render loop and delete some things before we get started. Let's clear out rendering the sum AABB. We don't need the Minkowski difference box, the penetration vector, the collision box, or the point intersection code. Next, we'll add a few variables inside the loop here. First up, we'll add a temporary color called faded. This will just be white with an alpha of 0.3. Replace the start AABB's color with faded. Next, we want to create three floats. This is for drawing the slabs. We want X, Y, and size. These are just the position and size of the sum AABB. Since we're using a square, we don't have to store the X size and the Y size, or rather the width and height. Now we'll render four lines. These lines replace the rendering of the sum AABB that we had before but they extend the sides out to the edges. Now this is important to visualize how the slab test works. Next up, we'll define a min and max vector using some AABB yet again. This function isn't in our physics.h yet, so let's quickly jump over there and add it. Back in main, now that we have the min and max vectors, we're going to write a little algorithm. We're going to write enough of the slab test here so that we can interact with it. I find having an interactive example makes things much easier to intuit. First, we'll calculate the magnitude of our line. We can do that simply by subtracting start AABB from pause. We're going to continue with a for loop looping through our game's dimensions. Since we're running a 2D game, just set the condition to i is less than 2. For each axis or dimension, we only want to run this if the magnitude for the set axis or dimension is not 0, to prevent a divide by 0 situation. Next, we'll create an entry and exit time. This will give us a value from zero to one that represents how far along our vector intersects with the slab. We'll draw these as little quads. Entry points are cyan and exit points are orange. Before we compile and run, you may want to adjust the window size if you haven't already. I changed the numbers in render.c and then used global.render.width and height in renderinit.c. For me, 1920 by 1080 seems good, but feel free to select any size that works well for you. Finally, we can open up the game and have a look. What you will notice is that we have these two slabs, one horizontal, one vertical, and the box you can see in the center is exactly what the sum AABB used to be. It's still there, we just aren't rendering it as the slabs take care of that. 
The rule of the slab test is this. If both entry points are sequential on the line and the line includes at least one exit point, then we have a collision. As soon as one of the exit points sits between the two entry points, we know there's no collision. We know this because we can see that our moving box has passed through an entire slab without intersecting the other slab. Now that we have an idea of how we can test for intersections, let's create the function in physics.h. First, we'll create a new type called hit. This type has a boolean is hit, a float time, and a vec2 position. Then we'll add a new function prototype that returns a hit. Ray intersect AABB takes three arguments. The starting position of the ray, a magnitude, and the AABB to test against. Copy and paste the prototype into physics.c and then cut and paste the test from main.c into this function. We'll need to add a few extra bits to determine whether there was a collision and the position of the collision. First, create an empty hit value at the top. Change the sum AABB to just AABB. Now create two floats, last entry and first exit. Last entry will be set to negative infinity and first exit will be set to infinity. Now we want to calculate last entry and first exit by using min and max with these t1 and t2 variables. Inside the loop, we want to add a clause for if the magnitude on either axis is zero. In this case, there can be no intersection if the ray starts outside the slab. Remember the rule? If there's no exit point between the entry points, and there are two entry points, and there is at least one exit point, then we have a collision. Next, we want to calculate the position of the hit. We do that by just moving along the line, kind of last entry point percent of the way. So last entry point is a number from 0 to 1. So if it's 0 0.5, then we move halfway up the line, and that's our intersection point. Finish off the hit struct, setting is hit to true, and the time to last entry. Finally, return the hit struct, and we're done. Pop back on over to main.c, and we'll render the hit box. It's nothing too fancy here, we'll just call the function, and if hit is hit is true, <laughs> then we'll draw a box at the collision point. Now launch the game again. Have a little play around. Hopefully this interactive version makes it easier to understand than just reading the code. And that's it for today.